My name is Anthony. My sobriety date is eight nine seventeen. I was I was I was in a des I was desperate. You know what I mean? Like I was defeated. I didn't want to feel the feelings of going through the withdrawal symptoms. I didn't want to look at all of the stuff that I had been just pushing to the side during my using, and like. I knew that I was desperate and beaten up enough to where I knew I needed help, but I was so scared of having to like get the help and then deal with the reality afterwards. I needed, first of all, time to get away. Like I needed to be away from the daily, you know, um, running of, of my drug use and, and, and everything else that comes with it. Um, it gave me a place that like I could lay down and feel some serenity at night and not feel alone having people around me. Um, it made me feel like, you know, that this was necessary, that I needed to take this time for me and, 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 and give myself a break. I remember being in about maybe seven to 10 days in and um, I started having a lot of those thoughts that I was fami familiar with, like maybe I don't really want to be here, or maybe this place isn't going to work for me, or maybe they're not going to be able to help me, like I need help, like all this just trying to control and dictate, you know, all this stuff, and for me it would be like addict behavior, if you will. And that night we had this community meeting and like we had to be addressed for like an issue that was going on in the community. And um, out of nowhere, there was an operations manager, and his name's Eric, I'm gonna say his name, and like, when he walked into the room to address us, like, I, I remember feeling real nervous and kind of like, oh, what's he gonna say? What, what do we have to deal with now? And like, he addressed us in what I, how I word in a very, how I would word in a very spiritual way, like, he, the way he addressed us as a community, I felt the presence of like, love and care, and that like, he really like, wanted to point out to us what, what needed to be worked on, but he did it in such a way where it didn't feel like an attack. And I actually remember like shedding tears in that group because for me it was a sign that like there was people around me that I was familiar with who addressed me like that in the past in recovery and I felt like it was my sign that like there's people waiting for you to help you and they're right here, just stick and stay. And that day I, I never looked back. I just felt like I didn't feel alone, you know, and I needed that, I needed to be reminded that I'm not I also needed to, you know, there was a lot of uh, outside 12-step fellowship, uh, uh, fellowship programs that were coming in and bringing meetings to us. And I also needed to be reminded that like, that when I get out of here, recovery continues as well and get me back to like the things I know that works. Like, you know, um, getting into a 12-step program, getting a sponsor, reading literature and uh, learning how to apply it. You know, finding that conscious contact with a higher power again and learning how to, you know, practice my relationship with it again. And like recovery first gave me that time and gave me like this, the, the, the foundation to get that back. You don't have to do this alone. There's so many, so many, so many people who have felt the way you have felt, have all the fears and concerns that you have. They, they think, feel, and understand just the way you do. And my life is like amazing today, you know? So I need to always look back and see where it started. And it started with recovery first. And it's still there to this day. My name is Carlos. Um, my sobriety date started on March 22nd, 2017. I started to play baseball, and I asked my dad, I was probably 10 years old, to, I was gonna practice for, to make the team of Little League in Puerto Rico, which I did. And uh, so I came back because the parents need to sign, you know, that way the waiver that I can go to, I was, we, we were gonna go to Mexico. And my dad that day, that afternoon, told me, I'm not gonna sign it. But I thought he was joking, I said, well, he just wrong, he might sign it later or whatever. And two hours later, I keep, Dad, you need to sign the papers. And once again, this time he say no, but by saying no, but he was uh, really meant it. And I say, why? Well, he told me, you're not gonna be better than me. And that, The first day, I mean, I really didn't know what to expect, but I was welcome. I was working like a, like a part of the family. Obviously, I was very nervous. I, was, I didn't know where to expect out of this, out of the recovery first. I came in as a little boy today and think I'm a grown man. I'm growing with this because the first recovery did help me. It helped me with my past. It, it helped me where I came from. 
all my, my younger years, you know, my youth years and all that, and there were some issues that I really, I guess I knew about it, but I never put it into practice. I remember my first uh, thing with alcohol, I bought, in which I remember at that point, it probably cost me 35 cents, I bought a bottle of wine, cooking wine for that matter, and I drank it all. And that's when my, my addiction started happening. Then I the experience with marijuana. When I was started smoking crack, that was it for me. And I got hooked into it. And by me hooking to it, I was doing it probably on a weekly basis, but then after that, and I was tired. I was tired of being tired, and here I was, smoking crack. And I say, what the hell, you know what I mean? So it came that I make that decision and the recovery first, it did help me. It did help me not only making that decision because the decision you had to make on your own, but it, it gives you the foundation of what to do about it, what not to do, what really, you know, it brings you in the, in the present, it brings you the, you know, all this stuff that you're going through life and by going through life, Sometimes because you run into a drug addiction and that addict mind, you just don't do it at all. You do it for a couple of days and all of a sudden you're back to square one. And every time it gets worse and worse and worse. So, I mean, I'm very grateful that I, that I came to recovery first. I'm very grateful. Today, just happy that one I'm at. And uh, I'm sorry to become emotional, but this is something that I, <laughs> That is for me, it's just one day at a time and recovery first, it's been my foundation. And I don't know, I mean, there's so much gratitude that I feel today that I will not change it for life. I will not change it for nothing right now. Even though I feel well today, I'm almost over a year clean, but this is for me on a daily basis. I'm not comfortable. I am comfortable where I'm at today, but I'm not, I don't want to feel so comfortable that I'm going to forget this. This for me is a life term. This, I'm never going to get tired of this. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to help another addict, to talk about it, and not because, and this is a, this is a, a life changes experience for me. It probably did save my life. I'm somebody today. I'm a dad today. I felt loved. And one of the things today for me, I really feel that I matter. First time in my life that I really, I, I'm somebody. My name is Dan, my clean date is 420, 2016. You know, I had a lot of fears about, you know, am I even gonna stay, am I gonna leave, you know, am I gonna, you know, do I really want this? And, you know, staff was very encouraging to me, you know, meeting me where I was at and, you know, really expressed to me you know, the importance of staying and seeing it out. When I first got here, I, I really didn't even believe that I was an addict. You know, I just believed that I had a problem with painkillers and, you know, going through them too fast. And, you know, I, my, my biggest fear coming into treatment was that, you know, A, I didn't belong, like B, I wasn't gonna stay, and C, like, what good is it gonna do for me? So like that was my biggest obstacle and hurdle like in my own head was, you know, how is this going to help me when I don't want to be here? You know, the first time, you know, first couple of times I went to treatment was, you know, for somebody else but me. You know, it was either for my mom, you know, for my daughter's mother, the family, you know, whatever friends I still had left. It was just to appease them. Treatment at Recovery First really taught me, you know, how to be a man like I, I hate to say it but like I didn't know how to get up and cook breakfast or you know the responsibility of making my own bed or taking out the trash or you know after eating doing a dish and putting it away you know re recovery first really taught me you know how to you know get up suit up and show up like even when I didn't want to get up in the morning and you know complained of being sick or I didn't sleep the night before you know there was always encouragement to get up and go to group and you know face the day and you know I remember I didn't sleep probably my first three weeks in treatment and you know it was the longest three weeks of my life but for some reason like looking back now like I realized like 
I was okay. Like for someone that didn't sleep for three weeks, you'd say like, oh, like there's no way they made it throughout the day. But you know, with the support of like the community and the staff and my therapist and my peers, like I was able to get up and like look forward to another day. Even though I didn't want to, it, it was easy for me to do. Treatment's changed my life in a lot of ways because you know, it taught me a lot of things that I didn't know before about, you know, discipline, self-control, you know, behaviors that I had that I didn't know I had. And now as someone that works in the field and works in treatment, like, I, I remember having, like, I remember being the problem client. So now I remember having clients that are the problem and I look at them like, man, like, that was me. I'm extremely grateful from the bottom of my heart for everything they've done for me, you know, showing up in my life. And, you know, for me, like, this is, you know, I've been going to recovery first, you know, about three or four years. And, you know, still have staff members, like, in my life, in my phone book, like, in circles of friends, you know, for years now. That, you know, they, I remember being a client and seeing staff, like, at meetings, seeing staff doing commitments, seeing staff sponsor others. And, like, that encourages me, like, when I get out, you know, I want to stick with them or that's what I want to do. And you know, here like fast forward like three years later, I still see like the same staff at meetings. I still see them helping others. I still like have meals with them, you know, on the weekends. I've been in treatment on Christmas. I've been in treatment on my birthday. I've been in there, you know, on those holidays where you don't want to be there at all. And like when people take the time out to come see you, that really shows, you know, that the love they have for the program, for Recovery First and for the clients. Right now I have at least 10 friends of mine that all have over a year, two years clean that I met at Recovery First. And like, it just shows how strong we are like together as a family because, you know, the outings do help, the meetings do help, but it's like those phone calls in between when you are struggling and the accountability that's provided when you meet people at alumni. And, you know, that's one of my favorite things about Recovery First. So like when I'm asked to speak, it's yes, no problem. When I'm asked to show up, it's yes, no problem because there's people that did that for me. So like for me, that's the biggest part of this program is the alumni that's in it, that set the road before I got here and the alumni that's still carrying the message. And like to the people that were carrying the message too that are now in treatment, fast forward a year or two from now are gonna be doing the same thing. Hi, my name is uh, Luis. I'm an addict from uh, Bayamon, Puerto Rico. I'm also a veteran of the United States Army. And uh, my clean day is February 20th, 2017. I have a lot of fear, uh, especially leaving my family behind and uh, leaving my daughter back home, uh, my job for that matter. Uh, and I heard so many things about treatment. You know, it's just like jail. You, you're not gonna be able to go nowhere. You're just gonna be stuck in a room. Uh, it's not gonna work for you. I heard so many things. Before I came to Recovery First, I was completely hopeless. You know, I had given up on life. I've been trying to get clean for over 17 years. And I tried mental institutions, I tried religion, you know, and none of these methods was, was sufficient for me. Uh, coming to treat me was a big step for my recovery, you know, I had to learn uh, how to use the right tools uh, to being able to, to stay clean. And it might not sound like much, but now I have a year clean. And before coming to treat me, I, I couldn't even have a day clean, not even an hour clean. I'll be completely honest, uh, it, it took a little bit for me uh, to realized this was going to work for me. But it wasn't until I, I started listening to the staff, their, their message, because one thing about Recovery First is most of the, uh, the behavioral health techs that, that work there, they are, uh, they are in recovery as well. And that's r something that really uh, attracted me to the program, you know. And I started listening to them, uh, their experience, and how bad they had it before uh, they came to recovery, that I thought if what they were saying was remotely true, there, there might be a remote chance for me. You know? 
Recovery for sure is a big part of my recovery, you know. And uh, what I like the most about recovery first is that I was a very stubborn man, you know, a stubborn man that didn't want to stop and get directions, you know. And uh, coming to this program, I was finally able to be pointed at the right direction. I learned a, a, a lot of good stuff in recovery first, but uh, one of the main things uh, that really stuck with me is that, you know, uh, re structure and accountability is a big part of recovery. You know, just by making my bed uh, in the morning, uh, buying groceries, making, you know, uh, making my own dinner, cooking my own dinner, and stuff like this, you know, uh, teach, taught me how to be, uh, be held accountable, you know. I didn't take care of myself for so long that I, I had forgotten how to do it. And, uh, you know, I got to, you know, take care of myself once again when I was in the program. These people saved my life. Alexis, Jason, Joe, Connie, all of you guys in my life, you know. I know that you really care about me and I wasn't just another paycheck for you. You actually care. My name is Max and my sobriety date is November 23rd, 2017. This time I have been um, completely honest and that's one thing that Recovery First ta taught me and that it's okay to be who I am and to learn how to love myself. Um, and those are some of the you know, some of the things that, they, that Recovery First taught me, that it's okay to be me and um, allow people to, to love me um, until I can learn how to love myself. I lost my mother a few months ago and that led to my relapse. After my relapse, uh, a, a good friend of mine passed away from an overdose and I was there when it happened. And at that point, um, I knew that that was my reality. That if I was continue on this path, that that's going to be me. I'm going to be another statistic. Um, and I didn't want to be that. I was very nervous coming to Recovery First. It's not my first treatment center. So I had a lot of emotions around that. Um, my flight arrived um, Fort Lauderdale around 12.45 in the morning. So it was an overnight flight. Um, and when I arrived to the airport, the airline lost my luggage. And so I was greeted by um, in a Recovery First employee who brought me back to the facility. And from, from the very beginning, the, the staff was very amazing and accommodating um, because I did not have luggage for two days. And so that just made me feel so welcomed and comfortable. It was about my second day here and my really my very first um, group and was a, it was a grief and loss group. And I had had a lot of significant loss coming into treatment. And so I thought that was a sign that I'm in the right place because the group facilitator specialized in that. And those are some of the core issues that I didn't deal with for a very long time. And so by being able to um, be in that group um, really opened my mind to, uh, to treatment. One of the most difficult assignments that I had was um, I had a lot of grief around that. And my therapist, who Christine, was quite amazing. And she was able to, um, she was able to give me assignments that I was able to, to identify those. And one being, um, I had to write a letter to my mother. And I was stuck on it for quite some time. And I asked one of our um, facilitators on how am I, so how do, how do I do this? How do I start this process? Because I didn't want it to be all sad. And um, so I, I learned and I was taught that to, to write about the good first. And by doing that, opened up a whole floodgate of, um, of feelings and emotions and uh, things that I was able to get out on paper that I needed to say to my mom that I'm not able to in person. And by doing that, um, I'm able to, uh, I'm free of that, that guilt and shame that I caused my family and specifically my mother. I had a really cool experience 
um, sitting out on the patio and because of the landscaping being so beautiful, that was my meditation time in the, in the morning. I would have my morning coffee and I would stare at this plant and it was a bird of paradise plant. And when I came into treatment, I noticed that it was starting to bloom. It was a bulb. And I watched this the whole 30 days that I was here. And my last day, right before I coined out, I'm looking over at this plant and it's in full bloom. And that really touched my heart and it just solidifies what I'm doing and that it's time to continue with this and, uh, and spread the message. It doesn't stop here in treatment. You know, this isn't the cure-all of, of, uh, of our disease of addiction and alcoholism. That there's a lot of work that needs to be done, you know. Um, however, what this does provide is some time away from your last drink and drug, and it gives you some time to uh, realize and get to have some knowledge around your addiction that when you do leave these, um, these when you do leave the facility, you're able to have a foundation to move forward in your recovery.